It's the Packet Froa! Welcome to the channel! Hey there! In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a Rista virtual switch inside of CML. And this is going to be a good way to discuss how to do multiple disk images in CML, which is something that you normally couldn't do. So this is a Rista site, and if you haven't been here before, uh, you can just register for uh, an account there, and you will be entitled to download the virtual images, but not the actual production stuff. And when you sign in, there's two things on the bottom. There is one for the container uh, version of this, where you can run this in Docker. I'll probably talk about that one of these days. And then the one we're interested in is the virtual EOS. So inside here, there's two main components. There is a file called a boot, which sounds Canadian, but this is actually for booting your image. And then we actually have the firmware that is uh, loaded by the uh, boot file. So we're going to download both of these. I've already downloaded them and put them in a working folder for uh, of these. But we want the serial file here. And then we need the VMDK. And I recommend working with the 32-bit for this. There is a 64-bit one, but I haven't found a great reason to switch over for the Arista platform yet. But I'm sure there is a, something there if I dig into it, but for right now we're going to stick with this guy. So inside my WSL, I have the serial file and I have our VMDK. Now we need to do some work on these files because CML only works with the QCOW2 format, which is part of Kimu. So to do that, we're going to use two utilities. We're going to convert the ISO with a utility called DD. And then we're going to convert the resulting files with a utility called Kimu image. So let's go ahead and start with the ISO. And what we want to say here is, and what we want to say here is DD, the input file is the serial ISO. And then the output file is the same name, except for this is going to be an IMG, which is basically just a raw image format. And now it is converted to there. We're going to make this a QCOW, and we're going to do that with the Kimu image. We're going to use the convert option. By the way, you need to install this if you uh, don't have this already there. Uh, it's just part of the Kimu utilities. And then the format is going to be raw, and the output is going to be your QCOW2. And we'll pick our image file here, and then our output is just going to be QCOW2. So we're going to do the same thing with the VMDK. Convert, except for this is VMDK. And we picked our VEOS. And this is going to, again going to be your QCOW2. So now that we have all those converted, we should be able to have a look at what we have here. And we can clean that up a little bit. We'll say anything that is QCOW. So we see we have our two files. And now what we want to do is we want to get these uploaded into CML. So this is my CML. And what we're going to do is just hop over to Tools and then Nodes and Image Definitions. And then we're going to go over to image definitions and then manage. This is where we actually do our uploads. So I'm just going to select this. And then we're just going to upload each of these files. So this one first. And then the next one. Okay, so that's been uploaded. You'd think we would just go create image definition here, but uh, it's actually a little bit convoluted in CML. So what we want to do is go back out. And we want to create the main definition first there because it's just a little bit easier when we associate things. So go add, and we're just going to give this a name. We're going to say this is Arista V E O S. You can see I've had this before when I was doing my previous stuff. And we give a description if we want. We're going to say whatever we want to type here used for switch stuff. Now the nature is going to be a switch. And then we can fill in the rest of the information here. So we can have more of a detailed description. I'm not going to bother. We're going to say that this is going to be a VEOS. 
and then the switch is going to be the icon and the label is Arista VEOS. So basically when I add a node, this is going to be the prefix that uh, gets numbered on there just so it's something to start the naming. Uh, icon is going to be a switch. I can change it if I feel like it. And then in the menu, this is what's going to show up. So we've got to get the low level stuff down. So this is going to be KVM. The assimilation driver, we're just going to say is server because uh, the other stuff here is tied for various Cisco stuff and server is good enough for a generic connection. IDE is fine for this solution. We need to get this memory. So we're just going to say this is four gigs of RAM, two CPU, and we'll say it can use 80% of that. For the network driver, we're just going to say this is E1000, which is the common virtual driver that VMware uses for VMs and stuff. We don't need to worry about uh, boot disk size or anything like that here. We don't need to worry about video memory because there's no uh, graphics. For the loopback, this is just for the particulars of the node. We'll just say that this is loopback zero. There's going to be one serial port. And we'll say there are nine interfaces. So the first one is going to be the management. And then from there, we're just going to have Ethernet one all the way to eight all the way to eight there. Then for the boot time, we're gonna give this a few minutes to boot up properly. So we'll give this, uh, let's say 480 seconds. And then the way we can speed this up there so that CML will know when the node is ready is we tell it what prompt to look for. And on an Arista switch, that is gonna be the local host login. Now, if you don't know this, basically what you have to do is just boot up a node on your own and then uh, see what happens. And then once you get to the logon screen, just uh, write down what that is there so you can uh, do this yourself. We're not gonna bother with any of the pie outs and the automation stuff. Uh, we're gonna just uh, keep our battles pretty short today and we're just focusing on the multi-disc thing. So we're just gonna go create. And now that we have that, we're gonna go create new definition. And I'm going to name this Arista VEOS and then the current version as of the time of recording and what I downloaded. And for the label, we'll pick the same thing. The description, I'm not going to bother. But the reason for this video is that when we're in the image definition editor, you can see it's either one node or the other. And that is the problem that we're solving with this video. And we have to do this inside by SSHing into the node. I'm guessing what happened here is Cisco, uh, they finished coding the feature for the release, but it didn't make uh, the final cut because there's like no documentation on this. And I'm guessing when CML like 2.3 or whatever comes out there, they'll have a proper GUI option. But for right now, this is what you do. We'll just pick whatever image to load there, and then we have to upload the other one and make an edit in the YAML file. So we're just going to bind this to our Arista here. We're not going to change anything else. So we're just going to go create. So now we have our disk definition and then we have our no definition that we created on the other page. So at this point I can hop over to CML and if you have an SSH to CML before you connect to port 1122, not the regular 22 for um, SSH there that you have to do a second one there because the main SSH port is used for the terminal server. So once we're in here, we have to do a couple things. The first thing is we need to figure out where our files are because remember we uploaded two files and one of them is used in the node definition, which means the other one needs to be moved. So we can just do a sudo find. And because we know the file name, we're just going to say we're going to look for the EOS. And we can see that it is in a folder called var local viral2 drop folder. Then this is the name of our image. So where we need to put this is I'm actually just going to copy this and put it here for safekeeping. Is we need to go to var local viral2 ref platform. Or ref plat. Now inside here, there is the CD-ROM, which is copied over when you first install uh, CML. If you choose to copy over the uh, disk contents, 
And then we have this diff folder. The diff folder is the things that are different from the CD-ROM, and this is where we do our edits. So inside here, it's going to say permission denied, so we need to sudo. And we have the node definitions. This is the first thing we made where we define the interfaces and the boot time and that kind of stuff. We don't need to touch this. We need to touch the virial base images. So let's copy here and go in here. And inside this is all my disk definitions. You can see uh, there's some standard ones. I have some Aruba, some uh, SD-WAN stuff, Juniper. Uh, and the one that we want is Arista. So let's get in there. And what we see is we have our Aboot and we have a YAML file that we need to edit, but we don't have our file yet for the uh, VMDK that we converted. So we have the file name here. So what I'm going to do is just go up here. and copy this. And then I'm just going to say, you know what, move the file to this directory. So if I look at LS, we can see that I have my file. The owner is correct, Kimu and Viral2, but the permissions are slightly off. You can see that the one that we did normally has read, write, read, write, read. And the one we just moved is read, write, read. So we're just going to correct that. And we're just going to say change mod 664 is read, write, read, write, read. And then we just need to select our file here. And if I look again, we are looking okay there. So now the last thing we need to do is just edit the YAML file. And I remember to sudo, otherwise you'll get a permission error. So inside here, we have the ID, we have the node definition. It's pretty straightforward, but we can see we have disk image. Now, they don't really document this as I mentioned, but if you want to add multiple disk images, all you do is you add the parameter this image two. And then I'm just going to copy this here and paste it. And that's all I need to do. If I was doing something with more disks, like say the Juniper VMX, then we could just say underscore three and so on and so forth. But for the most part, two is plenty for most you need there. Most appliances get away with one. And it's really just because Arista insists on doing the uh, boot ISO for whatever reason for their virtual machines, so, but uh, it's their product. I guess they can do whatever they want. But with that done, we're just gonna go save. Now, at this point, what you can do is you can restart the CML service, and that's going to just make sure that it realizes there's changes, or you can just reboot the node. I've done a bunch of maintenance stuff on the box there, so I'm just gonna go ahead and reboot mine. And when it comes back up, we should be able to build a simple Arista lab. Okay, we're back into CML, so let's just go ahead and press add to create a lab. And we'll give this a simple name. Arista lab works for me. And on the bottom here, we have our Arista node, so let's drag one. And we're not gonna get too fancy here because I'll probably do another video where we talk more about Arista itself there. This is more just about the multi-disc thing. So do that, and then, We'll name this guy number two. And then we'll just connect an interface. We'll just say we're connecting Ethernet 1 to Ethernet 1. And we'll add management to management. There we go. So we're just going to go ahead and boot these. And what's going to happen here is these are going to start booting. And then um, when they uh, get to that prompt that we added, it will say that it's up. OK, that's up and running. So we can sign in here. There's no password. And one thing you'll need to do is disable the zero touch provisioning or it's going to continue to reboot on you. 
but I'm not going to go too deep into the Arista there. I'll probably make another video there where we dive into uh, doing a full Arista deployment and we can play around with their Cloud Vision platform too. But uh, the main thing there was just to show you how the uh, multi-disc thing works there and I haven't made a video in a while so I figured it was a decent topic. Well, until next time, thanks for watching.